Every summer, the current leaders and retired senior officials of the Chinese Communist Party hold a very secretive and important political meeting, known as the Beidai He Conference. This is a key meeting that would determine the distribution of power among the leaders of the CCP. After this year's Beidai He Conference ended on August 16th, the seven members of the Standing Committee made appearances one after another. Among them, Wang Yang, the chairman of the CPPCC, who was known for being low-key in the past, unexpectedly appeared high-profile. Not only did his seat become higher up than before when he attended the meeting of the Central Financial and Economic Affairs Commission, his tone was also much tougher when he made his speech for the 70th anniversary of the peaceful liberation of Tibet on behalf of Xi Jinping. It seems that Wang Yang's position has improved a lot after the Beidai He Conference. Recently, there are rumors that Wang Yang may replace Li Keqiang as China's premier at the 20th National Congress next year. Some even say he may replace Xi Jinping as the CCP's general secretary. Who exactly is Wang Yang and what background does he have? Is it possible for him to become the next premier of China or even general secretary of the CCP? Let's explore that today. Wang Yang was born in March 1955, so he is 66 years old. Wang Yang entered the Standing Committee of the 19th National Congress of the CCP in 2017 and ranked fourth among the seven current members. Currently, he is the chairman of the CPPCC. He is regarded as a representative of the Communist Youth League faction led by Hu Jintao, and because of his relatively open-minded ideology, he is also regarded as a reformist within the party. However, some analysts believe that although Wang Yang dared to challenge consensus within the party before, he will not directly challenge to change the party's political route. Wang Yang's father died young. As the eldest son of the family, he dropped out of school before graduating from middle school and worked as a worker in a food factory in Sioux County in 1972. His fate was reversed for the first time when he married Zhu Ma Li, the daughter of Zhu Jianyuan, then deputy county head of the Sioux County. Although Wang Yang had not graduated from middle school, in 1976, he was transferred to the local May 7th Cadre School as a teacher. The May 7th Cadre Schools were Chinese re-education schools established during the Cultural Revolution that combined hard agricultural work with the study of Mao Zedong's writings in order to re-educate cadres and intellectuals in proper socialist thought. Later, Wang Yang was promoted to a member of the party committee of the school. In 1979, the CCP promoted a large number of young cadres. Wang Yang was sent to the Central Party School of the CCP to study, and then embarked on the official career ladder. In 1982, he served as Deputy Secretary of the Sioux County Communist Youth League, and later transferred to the Anhui Provincial Committee of the Communist Youth League, then became a member of the Communist Youth League faction. After the Tiananmen Square Massacre in 1989, Deng Xiaoping pushed economic reforms to cope with domestic and foreign pressures. At the time, 34-year-old Wang Yang had been promoted to the mayor of Tongling City of Anhui Province. Under his plan, local public opinion called for the so-called emancipation of the mind and the breaking down of barriers of the ideology of capitalism and socialism. This coincided with Deng's propositions, which attracted the attention of the Beijing media. The official media, People's Daily, also promoted his ideas, hailing it as Tongling Reform. In 1992, Deng Xiaoping passed Benghu City in Anhui Province during his southern tour and summoned Wang Yang. Deng was very appreciative of Wang. With Deng's promotion, Wang's career went up further. He was soon promoted to vice governor of Anhui Province at the early age of 38, the youngest vice governor of the CCP at that time. In September 1999, Wang Yang was appointed to the State Council as the Deputy Director of the State Planning Commission, and in March 2003, after Wen Jiabao became the Premier of the State Council, Wang Yang was appointed as the Deputy Secretary General of the State Council at the ministerial level in Wen Jiabao's cabinet, in charge of the daily work of the General Office of the State Council, and was also the Deputy Secretary of the Party Group of the State Council. He is also a member of the Three Gorges Project Construction Committee of the State Council. On December 24, 2005, at the age of 50, Wang Yang took the helm of Chongqing and became secretary of the CCP Chongqing Municipal Committee. On October 22, 2007, at the age of 52, Wang Yang was elected as a member of the Political Bureau of the CCP Central Committee, 
officially joining the top level of the party and state leaders. On December 1st of that year, he was appointed as secretary of the CCP Guangdong Provincial Committee. On March 16, 2013, he was nominated by Premier Li Keqiang as the third-ranked vice premier of the state council. He is in charge of agriculture, water conservancy, poverty alleviation, and commerce in Li Keqiang's cabinet. The term of office ends on March 19, 2018. In fact, before the 18th National Congress of the CCP in 2012, Wang Yang was rumored to be promoted to the Politburo Standing Committee. Radio Free Asia published a column stating that before the 18th National Congress, Hu Jintao's preferred successor was Li Keqiang and hoped to train Li Keqiang as the successor to the General Secretary, while then-Premier Wen Jiabao hoped that Wang Yang could become his successor as Premier of the State Council. Under the circumstances of compromise between the various factions of the CCP, after Xi Jinping was internally confirmed as the successor of the general secretary, and Li Keqiang naturally became the successor of the premier, eventually Wen Jiabao and Wang Yang could only obey the decision of the party. Therefore, Wang Yang lost the opportunity to be appointed the premier. Before coming to Beijing in 2012, when Wang Yang was in charge of Guangdong, he was a reformist. He advocated that economic growth should precede the redistribution of wealth. Then, a heated debate started between Wang and Bo Xilai, then secretary of the CCP Municipal Committee of Chongqing City, who advocated for common prosperity. The debate was considered to represent the differences between China's two paths, that is, the rich leads the poor, or common prosperity. Bo Xilai is a member of the Jiang Zemin faction, so a fight with him means a fight with Jiang's faction. For its own interests, the Jiang faction must ensure that its own people accounts for the majority of the Politburo Standing Committee. Therefore, when the CCP internally voted for the Standing Committee members, although Wang Yang received more votes than Zhang Dejiang, Liu Yunshan, Yun Zhengsheng, and Zhang Gaoli, he eventually lost anyways. Only in the 19th National Congress of the CCP in 2017 did Wang Yang finally become a member of the Politburo Standing Committee and was elected as the chairman of the CPPCC. The CPPCC is known as one of the four major groups of Chinese leadership, the others being the CCP's party committee, the National People's Congress, and the government. It is a united front organization established when the CCP set up its governance. The CPPCC is neither a state power authority nor an administrative authority, but a political consulting organization. The members of the CPPCC are not elected, but are recommended through consultation. They are mainly composed of entrepreneurs, artists, religious figures, non-communist party members, and representatives from other fields. The members can put forward policy suggestions and opinions to the government, but their proposals are only regarded as a form of democratic supervision and are not legally binding. Therefore, CPPCC is usually regarded as a rubber stamp and a political vase by the outside world. Because Wang Yang has the reputation as a reformer, other reformists within the Chinese system had pinned some hope on him. For example, in the first half of last year, Leng Jiefu, former head of the political science department at Renmin University, wrote an open letter to Wang Yang, suggesting that he convene a meeting to hold a political consultation. The letter called on Xi Jinping to resign from all positions in the CCP, government, and military, in order to deal with the crisis at home and abroad. The letter also said that an isolated China is facing challenges from all over the world. China does not have a single friend. What it has is only the burden of North Korea. He also proposed to use the federal system as the framework to create the Federal Republic of China. Leng Jiefu said in the letter that federalism can solve the Taiwan issue, the Hong Kong issue, and the issue of ethnic minorities. Although in the end, it didn't amount to anything as everyone expected, this letter still showed he had a little trust in Wang. However, within just a few years of taking office, Wang Yang, who is well-versed in the rules of CCP's officialdom, no longer possesses the character of a reformist and has taken on the posture of a true party official who follows the hard line of the party. Whether on the ethnic issue or the Hong Kong issue, it's the same. At the 2019 National Conference of the CPPCC, Wang Yang repeatedly used the official buzzword, xue xi, meaning study, in his speech at the closing session. 
It is reported that the word Xue Xi has been given the meaning of learning Xi Jinping's thoughts because the word Xi alludes to Xi Jinping's surname. It is believed to be a way to please Xi and put emphasis on Xi Jinping's status and to get his approval. On August 28, 2020, the CCP held its seventh Tibet Work Symposium. Li Keqiang and Wang Yang both praised Xi Jinping in person. Wang Yang even said in his concluding speech, Xi Jinping's speech is a revolutionary literature shining with the truth of Marxism. Wang Yang unexpectedly attended the Central Financial and Economic Affairs Commission meeting on August 17th this year. After the Beidai He meeting, the top level of the CCP suddenly put forth the three distribution system that attracted domestic and foreign attention. This is the end of the CCP's desperate struggle, robbing private wealth under the guise of common prosperity. Ironically, the problem that Wang Yang and Bo Xilai had been arguing about before was whether a portion of people should get rich first and push others to get rich, or the problem of common prosperity. Wang Yang, who has always advocated that economic growth precedes wealth redistribution, seems to no longer have the courage to express his viewpoint. On August 19th, Wang Yang, who is in charge of ethnic and religious affairs, attended the 70th anniversary of the peaceful liberation of Tibet ceremony in Lhasa as the head of the central delegation. Of course, Wang's speech at this event was also a rigid appearance of a party state member, preaching to stick to the iron walls of anti-separatism struggle. He also reiterated the sinicization of religion proposed by the Beijing authorities in recent years. Wang Yang made another harsh statement, saying, No outside force is allowed to dictate Tibetan affairs, and any attempt to separate Tibet from China will end in failure. The style of Wang Yang's remarks is surprisingly similar to the much-criticized wolf-warrior diplomacy style of the CCP. Therefore, we can see that the entire CCP is corrupt, and all the current members of the party have a share. Under the binding interests, Wang's position reached the top level of the CCP. Under the influence of the leftist forces, it's hard for him to be the open-minded reformer as before. However, over the years, Wang Yang has built up a good reputation in the official circles of the CCP, with very few negative rumors. He may have won a place in the complex factional struggle within the CCP, and was accepted by all factions as the next premier. Some analysts believe that Xi Jinping's actions over the past two years have led the US and the West to increasingly view China in a negative light, and the confidence in Xi Jinping has fallen to a near-record low. As the deadline for the U.S. to investigate the origin of the COVID-19 virus approaches, Xi, in a difficult situation, has released a vague message about possibly allowing Wang Yang to be his successor, with the intention of pacifying or blurring U.S. perceptions. Let's quickly talk about Chinese Premier Li Keqiang. Li will definitely step down next year, because according to the Chinese constitution, he can only serve two consecutive terms. Nearly a month after the severe flooding in Henan, Li Keqiang visited on August 18th. However, on that day, the Chinese official media only reported the news related to Xi Jinping, but did not mention Li Keqiang's trip. It was not until the evening of the 19th that Xinhua News Agency published a report. The CCTV report showed Li nearly falling down while inspecting the crop damages. The heavy rainfall in Henan province in mid-July caused heavy casualties in Zhengzhou city, but the exact number of deaths was covered up by the CCP, and still remains a mystery. During his inspection, Li said that officials must be held accountable for their negligence of duty. In fact, on August 2nd, the state council had decided to set up a special team to investigate the disaster. However, there have been no updates for the investigation for a long time. But as soon as Li Keqiang left Henan on the 19th, the team entered Zhengzhou to investigate this July 20th flood and publicly released the reporting telephone number. There have been analysis pointing out that, because the Henan Provincial CCP Secretary Luo Yangsheng and Zhengzhou Municipal Secretary Xu Li Yi are both members of Xi Jinping's Zhejiang New Army, perhaps Li Keqiang doesn't dare to touch Xi's army. Akio Yaita, chief of Senkai Shinbun's Taipei branch, recently analyzed on a live webcast program that Li Keqiang should be mobilizing anti-Xi forces to try to make a counterattack. According to Akio Yaita, there are two completely different versions of the rumors on Beidaihe conference. 
One is that Xi Jinping has seized the power and has no problem to be re-elected for another five years. The other is that Xi has been forced to play on the defensive and is in danger now. Li Keqiang has been saying the opposite tune to Xi Jinping since last year, and while Xi says the situation is rosy, Li points out many, many problems. If Xi Jinping is re-elected, will Li Keqiang be able to stay in the standing committee? Akio Yaita analyzed, according to the unwritten dictates of the CCP, 67-year-olds can stay in office, but 68-year-olds must retire. Next year, Li will be 67, so technically he can still be in office for another term. But if Li is retired and loses power, it is likely he will be suppressed by Xi. So if Xi stays, Li has to stay and make a last-ditch effort. There is also a precedent for the premier to become chairman of the National People's Congress after leaving office, to retain the position as a member of the standing committee. For example, in March 1998, Li Peng moved on to become chairman of the NPC after his two terms as premier has ended. Akio Yaita also points out that Xi's recent cultural revolution-style approach to governing, such as closing out-of-school classes and canceling English courses, has been increasingly evident. But opposition in the party is actually very strong. The Xi faction's contradictory approach seems to subdue people on the outside, but in the long run, people's dissatisfaction will build. Now Li Keqiang is supposed to mobilize this anti-Xi force to try to make a counterattack. As to whether Wang Yang will become the next premier or even the general secretary of the CCP, and whether Li Keqiang will be re-elected to the standing committee is still unknown. This year, there will be the sixth plenary session of the CCP Central Committee, and next year, the Beidaihe Conference will be held. Both are key meetings that will dictate the change of power structure in the CCP.